Good evening to you all. How about a hua? How about an aerosol? Oh, we got to try that again. How about an aerosol? Anybody out here want to say air power? And is everybody ready for the main event? You sure about that? Okay, here's the deal. A couple of years ago, my air assault buddy at the time, at the time, Command Sergeant Major of the 101st Airborne Division, <laughs> Command Sergeant Major Marvin Hill, told me what he looks for in a commander. He listed all the usual qualities that you'd expect. You know all the ones. And then he added, I also want a commander who is available to our troopers, who is accessible to our troopers, and who is approachable. Now, as I thought about it, I realized that in addition to all the qualities we expect in leaders, I also look for those specific attributes. And this evening, it is my honor to introduce to you a leader who has demonstrated his concern for each of you, who's already been to the hospital to pin Purple Hearts on some of our wounded warriors, to meet with a platoon that suffered a tragic loss, and who has proven above all that he is available, accessible, and approachable by flying halfway around the world to be here with us tonight. Fellow warriors, please join me in welcoming the leader who made the tough decision to provide us the resources that have enabled progress here in Afghanistan, the President of the United States of America, our Commander-in-Chief, President Barack Obama. Okay, but before the President starts, I think you all know the President was out on the basketball court a few days ago. Now, he'd beaten that team four times already. He just scored on the guy, and elbows started flying around. Now, the only explanation we can come up with is that they forgot who they were playing with. And so Sergeant Major Hill, still my air assault buddy, decided we'd give him a t-shirt. Well, okay, I got it. It's not the biggest, baddest. It's an ISAF t-shirt. It's HUA. But then, yeah, okay. But then the commander, the 43rd commander of the 101st Airborne Division, came up with a manly man t-shirt, and no one will mess with you if you wear this, Mr. President. HUA! Hello, everybody! I'm sorry, Bagram, I can't hear you. Air assault! Uh, it, it is great to be back. Let me first of all thank the 101st Airborne Division Band. Where's the band? Give them a big round of applause. Thank you. To Chief Thomas Hager and uh, the commander and conductor. Uh, I, I gather we had a couple of other uh, bands playing Manifest Destiny and Nuts. I don't know about, you know, uh, I don't know how they sounded. What do you think? Were they pretty good? It is great to be back. And I apologize for keeping you guys up late, coming uh, on such short notice, but I want to make sure uh, that I could spend a little time this holiday with the men and women of the finest fighting force that the world has ever known. And that's all of you. I want to thank General Petraeus 
not only for the introduction and the t-shirts, but for General Petraeus' lifetime of service. This is somebody who has helped change the way we fight wars and win wars in the 21st century. And I am very grateful that he agreed to take command of our efforts here in Afghanistan. He has been an extraordinary warrior on behalf of the American people. Thank you, David Petraeus. I want to thank all your outstanding leaders who welcomed me here, including General John Campbell, Admiral Bill McRaven, and from the 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, Colonel Todd Canterbury. I want to salute your great senior enlisted leaders, including Command Sergeant Major Scott Schroeder, Command Sergeant Major Chris Ferris, and Command Chief Craig Adams. I also want to acknowledge the outstanding work that our civilians are doing each and every day, starting with Carl Eikenberry, all the way through to your senior civilian representative, Thomas Gibbons, and all the civilians who are here. They are fighting alongside you. They are putting themselves at risk. They are, uh, they are away from their families, and, and we are very, very grateful uh, to them as well. So give them a big round of applause. I think we've got every service here tonight. We've got Army. We've got Navy. We've got Air Force. I think we may have a few Marines around, too. And a whole lot of folks from the 101st Airborne Division, the Screaming Eagles. Now, here in Afghanistan, you are all Coast Guard. Is that what I heard? <laughs> here in Afghanistan, all of you are part of one team, serving together, succeeding together, except maybe in next week's Army-Navy game. As your Commander-in-Chief, I've got to stay neutral on that. We also have some ISAF partners here as well. <laughs> you know, when I was here in the spring, we had a coalition of 43 nations. Now we've got a coalition of 49 nations. And this sends a powerful message coalition of nations that supports Afghanistan, uh, Afghanistan is strong and is growing. Now, I'm not here to give a long speech. I want to shake as many hands as I can. But let me say that at this time of year, Americans are given thanks for all the blessings that we have. And as we begin this holiday season, there's no place that I'd rather be uh, than be here with you. I know it's not easy for all of you to be away from home, especially during the holidays. And I know it's hard on your families. You know, they've got an empty seat at the dinner table. You know, sometimes during the holiday season, uh, that's when you feel the absence of somebody you love most acutely. But here's what I want you to know. As President of the United States, I have no greater responsibility than keeping the American people secure. I could not meet that responsibility. We could not protect the American people. We could not enjoy the blessings of our liberty without the extraordinary service that each and every one of you perform each and every day. So on behalf of me, on behalf of Michelle, on behalf of Malia and Sasha, on behalf of more than 300 million Americans, we are here to say thank you.